grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Um, I just want to talk about a pressing, a social issue um, that's going on, and that is the push for gay marriage and the acceptance of uh, homosexuality as a lifestyle. Now, I will talk about two things. One, I just want to read is from, this is from, uh, let's see, this is from the New York Times. And, because right now, what uh, what's going on now is that the Supreme Court is going to hear, eventually hear, uh, you know, cases involving, you know, same-sex uh, marriage. Now, again, I'm always talking, but speaking, for the most part, from a, a biblical perspective. I just want to read this, and I'm going to read something else, and then we'll get into the scriptures. Okay, so this is a uh, Illinois gay marriage bill is sent to Senate by the Associated Press. It's at the New York Times website, um, published January 3rd, 2013. Same-sex marriage cleared a first hurdle to becoming law in Illinois. Okay, after the Senate Executive Committee passed the legislation Thursday, sending it to the full Senate. It was not clear when a vote would take place there. If the measure becomes law, Illinois will become the 10th state to approve same-sex marriage. Advocates are pushing for full gay marriage rights just 18 months after the state recognized civil unions. Many faith organizations are opposed on religious freedom grounds, arguing that the proposal will compel them to treat same-sex unions as the equivalent of traditional marriage. Okay, so that's number one, so that you can see this push in Illinois and other states. Okay, um, and this other thing I wanted to read, which it didn't blow my mind, but I just thought this was, you know, it's just a sign of the times, literally. This is from uh, the Christian Post. Okay, and it says, this is by Michael Lubowski. Actually, this is some weeks old. I'm just now hearing about it. Uh, recently released Queen James purports to be first ever gay Bible. All right. uh, a recently released Bible translation based off of the King James Bible boasts of being the first ever gay Bible in the world, titled the Queen James Bible. Its publishers argue in a statement that it accurately translates certain verses pertaining to homosexuality, which have been misunderstood by religious conservatives. <laughs> so it, I don't see how you can misinterpret uh, abomination. <laughs> it is what it is, but I'll keep reading. Homosexuality was first overtly mentioned in the Bible in 1946 in the Revised Standard Version. There is no mention of or reference to homosexuality in any Bible prior to this. Only interpretations have been made, said the editors. That's the editors. That's a private interpretation by the editors. The book is not up for private interpretation. The Queen James Bible addresses those controversial verses by editing them very slightly for interpretive clarity. In other words, the change in the Word of God. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you do when you edit them very slightly. The edits all confirm that the Bible does not condemn homosexuality and therefore renders such interpretations impossible. Okay, I won't read anymore. We'll get into it. Because one thing I can't stand is when... Now, people want to do what they want to do. They make their choices. God has given us free will. But when you try to infringe upon the rights of others and that's what they do and when you try to uh, to perpetuate this this notion or idea that this book the Holy Bible is condoning uh, homosexual sexual acts that's what that's what I, I I can't stand it I seriously cannot stand it because the Word of God is not saying that at all. It condemns that behavior. And that's not the only sexual behavior that it condemns. 
but it no question unquestionably condemns that behavior. Now that's I can't stand it. Now when you let's go back, it'll revert back to the uh, the same sex marriage. Okay, eventually that's gonna go through. Uh, eventually, because you look, I mean, just from physical, I mean, you know what time we in, just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, but you know that from the scriptures. But you, when you look at it from just a, a logical sense, the minds of our children are already there. Our children are bombarded with that idea and accepting it in school, of accepting that on television, accepting it in the music. Okay, so what, so what was once unacceptable is now acceptable. I've even heard, a, a, I believe it was Piers Morgan say, if I'm not mistaken, or something to the effect that it's time to revise the Bible. And he's up there, uh, he's interviewing Joel Osteen and his wife. And Joel Osteen is tiptoeing around the actual, you know, the question at hand. And then his wife, he said, he asked, Morgan asked his wife, well, would you go to a gay marriage? And she, she says, yeah, a gay, gay wedding. How could you be a man of God or a woman of God or somebody who calls themselves a follower of Christ and condone that? Because saying that, you could then you say, oh, yeah, I'm a, I, I, I will uh, participate in the murder. It's this, or or um, I agree with fornication it, or, or adultery. See, that's, that's, that's. That's, that is a total mischaracterization of what the scriptures are saying. And that's what I can not stand. People are going to do what they're going to do, but when they try to twist the word of God, and when they infringe upon the rights of others, for instance, like when you look at marriage, no group, not, not, and many of these, and see, that's the part of it. That's part of the problem, too. You have people who aren't standing on anything, and they're the main proponent, or, or, or opponents. You talk about the Catholic Church. So... You know, an institution that, you know, had pedophiles running rampant, abusing young children, and they're against homosexual, you know, marriages. How about you deal with the homosexuality going on within your own institution? See, so you become a hypocrite. I've seen, I was watching Anderson Cooper. Then this is how they play it. You know, they had one man who's called himself a, a minister, and he's for same-sex marriage, and it's claiming that the Bible is not against homosexual uh, sex. Okay, and I'm going to get into how that in marriage, you, 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 can't, you can't have a marriage. But anyway, um, and two, he has a, a, another minister who has been caught or has come out that he is a homosexual himself. And he's saying it's wrong. But you, you can't, you don't, you're a hypocrite. How are you dealing in homosexual, dealing with men, and then saying it's wrong, and then you're going to argue a point with somebody who's for it? You don't have a leg to stand in. There's no integrity there. So it, it makes it look as if there are no people against it. You know, so that's, that's a problem. Now, when it gets to the marriage part, let's just go to, let's just go to Genesis. Let's just go to Genesis because you cannot, you cannot. Now you could, you know, with some other book or with some other doctrine and, you know, you believe in something else, you can say whatever you want. But when it comes to this Bible, you cannot say that uh, men having sex with other men and women having sex with other women is okay. You can get all into semantics, but the, you, you, you cannot Condone it. The Bible doesn't condone it. This is Genesis. This is Genesis. Uh, let's see. Where we want to start? Genesis 1 and verse 27. All right, so it says 1 and 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So he created a male and female. And this is the first commandment given to man. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Now you can't be fruitful and multiply with a man and a woman. I mean a man and a man or a woman and a woman. You need a man and a woman.
woman. So read it again. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. That's the only way they could do that. So that's that was the first commandment. Let's go to marriage when marriage is instituted and see if it's between a man and a woman. Because when he put them together, he told them, look, purpose, multiply. This is Genesis 2 and verse uh Let's see, verse 21. Well, let's verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So he said he's going to give somebody, because Adam was made first. He said, I'm going to give somebody to this man. Let's see if he found him, his, his uh, help me in the animals or if he, he made another man or male. Let's find out what he did. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he wanted to call them and whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof. 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for Adam there was not found and help me for him. So he didn't find his help me amongst the animals. See if we deal just what the scriptures are saying the Queen James Bible you know that's a malarkey. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh that, instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. He didn't make him another man. See, the, man, the woman was made for the man. Even if you look at the anatomy of a man and a woman, they go together. Even, a man and a man does not go together. It's just, just basic. It just does not go together. And there's nothing to be produced through that. That's just, I mean, that's just, that's just the bottom line. There's nothing to be reduced from that. Verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. So that is a union that he, he instituted. And that's the ones he told to be fruitful and multiply. And you're only supposed to be fruitful and multiply within the confines of marriage. That's what marriage is about. That's what marriage is for. And furthermore, you consummate a marriage with sex. So you, And this is in the eyes of God. So you're telling me you make a vow before God. You make a vow before God, say, I'm going to be with this person in the, in the, in the uh, sanctity of marriage. Only you do it with a man and a man? That's totally against what God set up. He's, he brought a woman unto the man. He didn't bring another man unto the man. He didn't have a woman first and bring a woman unto another woman. He brought a woman, Eve, unto the man. And they married. And see... And it's even blood within that covenant of marriage when it's done properly. In the sense of, in that first uh, act with a virgin, what do you have? You have blood, the blood even in that covenant. That's what you read in the scriptures about the, uh, the, the, the tokens of virginity, you see. So to say that 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 union could be between a man and a man and that it could be, uh, you know, that it consummated through that type of penetration, which you know what I'm talking about, is totally ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous to even try to condone. Furthermore, and I'm not even into the scriptures that are condoning the act. I'm just talking about when you think about the concept of marriage. Because out of marriage, the whole point of the union to marriage is to produce be fruitful and multiply. You, be, you have to be fruitful and multiply. Not with just your baby mama, but with your wife. I'm going to get into that too. Because there's a lot of hypocrisy on the other end. People fornicating, pointing fingers at people who commit uh, sleep, men sleeping with men. Well, you're a fornicator. We're going to read what the Bible says about both. So, in marriage, again, and there's nothing that can be produced. It's impossible to produce something with a man and a man and a woman with a woman. Two negatives and two positives. You, you know, you, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So let's go to the scriptures that outrightly condone it and see if this is interpreted wrong 
or somebody just having their own agenda and want to uh, circumvent and twist the word of God for their own devious and uh, according to the scriptures, wicked behavior. This is Leviticus, the 18th chapter. And I'm going to say this now. People that try to debate me on this, there is no debate. I will not debate you on this. Okay? You'll be blocked and your, your, your message will be erased if it's vulgar. You know, so I just want to make that clear. I, this is not even for you. <laughs> this is for this is this is for those who who basically know this is wrong. You know. Leviticus 18 and verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is abomination. How is that a mis how is that a misinterpretation? Uh, he, it really doesn't mean a man is not supposed to sleep with a man. That's not what that means. What is it saying then? I'm going to read it again. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. So in other words, a man should not lie with another man as Adam lied with Eve. You make him his wife. It is abomination. It's an abomination. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get a dictionary. We're going to look up abomination. Let's look up. Let's look up abomination and see what abomination means. Bear with me. Listen. Bear with me. Abomination. Let's see. Okay. Abomination. Disgust. A loathsome act or thing. Okay. Abominable. Causing intense disgust. So that's what the law says about that. It is an abomination. Okay? That's what the law says about that. I'll read it again. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. 20 and 13. Leviticus 20 and 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Hear that word again. Abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. That is what the scriptures are saying. And that's when, before the Lord took the, the, the ability of, of the children of Israel to execute judgment. Because they were so wicked in their ways, they couldn't execute proper judgment. So you had the death penalty here for that act. But best believe and understand that the Lord still feels the same way. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. Like Piers Morgan said, he said, any time we, uh, or something to that effect, any time we, you know, change the Bible, so, you know, as if the Bible changes according to what the foolish beliefs of the time are. The Bible doesn't change, God doesn't change, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no variableness in God. He doesn't, he's God, he doesn't have to change. He, he was and is and is to come. It's you who change and are foolish and goes with the tide, not God. So this is, uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Because as I said, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of hypocrisy out here. You know, people saying, well, you know, they're pointing fingers. And there's even less of that now. You know, it's just an accepted thing now. But a lot of people are pointing fingers and saying, man, these people, you know, they're on their way to hell and they fornicate. Well, you on your way to hell too, according to the scriptures. I mean, and you say, you, should, you can't judge. I'm, I'm not saying who's going to hell, but I can, I can judge according to what the scripture is saying. And, and it's saying certain behavior will, end, will, will uh, make you end up in hell. Okay. Righteous judgment. Nothing wrong with righteous judgment. This is 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 reads, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So those who are unrighteous, now what is righteousness? Righteousness is based on what is right. What is right is based on the law of God. So those who are lawless, who don't follow the law of God, who don't follow Leviticus 18 and 22 or Leviticus 20 and 13, which we just read, we're going to find that out too. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. So if you want to go out and run and buy the Queen's Bible, be not deceived. If you want to go to a gay wedding and think it's okay, be not deceived. If you are dealing in that type of lifestyle and think, well, the Lord's going to love you anyway, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, 
And those two who are having sex outside of the confines of marriage. Bringing children into this world outside of the confines of marriage. Doing that which will bring children into this world. See, all in the same barrel. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. So people who are cheating on their spouse. How you gonna look at this person that's committing homosexual acts and say, oh, that's terrible, and then you're cheating on your wife. No adulterers, no effeminate. Now those are men who are acting like women. The Lord even talks about that. He said, no effeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind. An abuser of themselves with mankind is, a, is someone, a man, who's having sex with another man. No thieves, all in the same boat. No covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And if you don't inherit the kingdom of God, you're going to lift your eyes up in hell. See, the word of God is to clean you up. See, so, you know, one could say, well, I was born this way. Listen, the bottom line, that's not even an issue. The bottom line is that you are not to have, man is, a man, the man is not to have sex with another man. A woman is not to have sex with another man. Just like you're not, a man is not to have sex with a woman outside of the confines of marriage. Just like a man who was married is not supposed to commit adultery. Just like someone is not supposed to steal. Just like someone is not supposed to commit murder. Because the same thing can be said, well, I was born a murderer. <laughs> Look, the bottom line is whatever you, even if, even if that is the case, I'm not even arguing that. The bottom line is, according to the Bible, that's all I'm dealing with. It's not my opinion. We reading this. According to the Bible, it's an abomination. You can't get around that, according to the Bible. Now, if you want to make up some other book, make your own book up. But don't claim that the Bible is misinterpreting or this has been misinterpreted in the Bible. Because it's in too many places. I haven't read all the places for, for sake of time. It's in too many places. Let's go to... Uh, Let's go to let's go to Luke. Luke 17. Because the scriptures tell us that, that this is gonna be. So don't be surprised when these laws are passed here and they've been passed in other places around the world. And this is Luke uh, 17 and 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Right, so when he's about to make his return, it's going to be like this. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So in other words, the same people are going to go along with their daily routine, dealing in sin, and thinking they're okay. This is Isaiah 24, because sin is the problem. Not just uh, men having sex with men and women having sex with, with women. Having sex with women. Not just sodomy. It's sin, period. That's the problem. Sin is transgression of God's law. Have, when a man have a sex with another man, it's a transgression of God's law. A woman have a sex with another woman, it's a transgression of God's law. Somebody fornicating is a transgression of God's law. Somebody committing adultery, transgression of God's law. Somebody having a sex with an animal, transgression of God's law. Right? There's people that do that. That's all an abomination to God. That's all sin. Uh, Isaiah 24 and verse, let's see, verse, uh, we'll start at verse 1. Because we talked about the return of the Son of Man. He's coming to deal with all this sin. See, and, you know, homosexuality, that's just a, you know, the, you know that's a sign of the time. But it's this sin running around. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty. This is Isaiah 24 and 1. The earth empty. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh the waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth the broad and having thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with the mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. 
Okay, so you know that the, at, at that time when the Lord's making this return, everybody that's not doing what thus saith the Lord is in for. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The holy people of the earth do languish. So the Lord is coming back in wrath. And let's find out why. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. People have broken his laws. See, there's no, you know, there's no uh, uh, reverence for God's law in any form. And that's the problem. The whole sin. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. So even if you enter men, and you're a man, you want to ask such another man, at this time it's going to be even hard to find one, because the earth is burned, and few men left. Understand, and then there's judgment. There's judgment with the lake of fire. Understand. Understand is that pleasure you dealing with in that in your mind is that worth dying for? Dying that second death. Last place, 1 Timothy 1. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. It says, 1 Timothy 1 and 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Okay? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. But the lawless and disobedient. So that penalty of the law, somebody who's following the law, they're not worried about the stop sign because they're going to stop. They're not worried about the penalty of it, rather, because they're going to stop at the stop sign. But the one, you know, the, <laughs> the penalty is made for the one who's not going to follow the laws of the road. Right? And this is, this is the road map, this Bible. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. So it's all in the same boat. It's all in the same boat. One big sinful boat. For men stealers, talking about kidnappers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. So basically you have to understand that it's an abomination how you put it. According to the word of God. So if, if that's what you want to do. Don't, don't please. Well, I'm, not, I'm not begging you because you're going you're gonna to be judged for everything you do. But I, what I will say, I'm, I'm, I'm one to, who are, I'm not scared because it's not the politically correct thing to do right now. Because serving God is never politically correct. The world hate God. You, I mean, <laughs> they hate God. And when you're serving a God, you're totally contrary to the world. So I'm not, I'm not fearful or you know, expect this to be accepted. But understand the scriptures, that's a mischaracterization of what the scriptures are saying. It's a twisting of the scriptures. And many people can be led away with that falsehood, particularly children. So that's just something on, you know, that issue. And uh, thanks for listening.